Welcome to this video tutorial. This is all about the methods in context and a quick guide to how it is marked. So just to remind you, what is the methods in context? Now this is on paper one and it's on paper um, one on the AS also. Um, it's worth 20 marks. You spend 30 minutes on this answer and the instruction of this question is to use the item as well as the hooks um, in the question to give strengths and weaknesses of the method that is asked for and the main focus of this question is to apply to the context in education okay and you'll find that context in the item so students answering needs to consider the characteristics of the people the groups the students the teachers parents um, who are being studied and how it might have an impact on the research so this answer will need to show good AO1 of the method and the characteristics of the research Students will need to also apply, so that's AO2, to the school context and the context in the question using the item and their own knowledge. And also show a level of evaluation by giving strengths and weaknesses, faults and pitfalls of studying this group or groups um, um, in education. So each statement or point made will be marked in bands. And these bands correspond with the mark scheme, starting off at the bottom with B1, um, going up to band 5 with um, more increasing application. So lower bands tend to be weak and undeveloped. Um, they tend to be disjointed. They tend to be short sentences, um, very undeveloped. Whereas your higher bands, B5, tend to be quite a chunky paragraph. It's very specific and it's got developed application. So let's look at this question and what the bands are in the context of the question that was on the 2017 summer paper from paper one A level. So it was asking you to apply the material from the item. So you'll see that up here. And your knowledge of research methods evaluate strengths and limitations of using field experiments um, to investigate the effect of teachers labeling of pupils. Okay, um, so here you need to show good AO1 of the strengths and weaknesses of a field experiment. I would follow the PET, so practical, ethical, theoretical issues. Then you need to apply it to a school context and also the effect of teacher labelling of pupils. Okay, so think about the groups who are being studied. Um, where is this field experiment taking place and what impact it will have? So the rest of this video tutorial, I'm just going to outline what the bands are, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, in the context of this question and give some examples, okay? So B1, B1 is just something that is copied from the item. It could be a point about a method or the wrong method, or it could be anything about the context which is not applied to the method. So in the context of the question about field experiments, you could be putting things um, like a field experiment is conducted in a natural setting. The natural setting part was in the item. No elaboration, really basic. Field experiments are observations. When observing students, they can be overt or covert. Okay, it's drifted to a different method. Or it could be something about the context with no link to the method at all. So students can be labelled as the ideal pupil according to Becker, causing self-fulfilling prophecy, streaming, subcultures and so on. No application there, method only. Moving up, you've got band two. These tend to be strengths or weaknesses of a method with very little application to education or the context and no real elaboration. Okay, so we're going a little bit more specific now. So for example, it could be field experiments avoid the artificial nature of a lab, they're more valid. Small scale, which means that the results be not be enough to generalize, experiments call, um, are cause and effect, experiments are in a natural setting, they're hard to control the variables, um, field experiments, you need to get permission off a gatekeeper, no real elaboration, um, no real application, really basic. Band three, strengths and weaknesses of the method which is developed enough or some limited application to the education context with no application to the context of the question. So now we're starting to see some sort of application to schools. 
So for example, we've got an advantage of a um, field experiment is that it's in a natural or real life setting. This is a theoretical strength as it increases the ecological validity as teachers and pupils are able to act as they would on a regular day. Okay, so something like that, we're starting to show a little bit of application. Okay, but the thing is with this is if you replace the word teachers and pupils with say um, doctors and nurses in a hospital, they might also um, act how they would on um, a regular day. So it's true in a different context. So the context isn't strong enough and that's why it would only get band three. A disadvantage of a field experiment is that they tend to be on a small scale. This is because they're time consuming, they're time consuming, you don't get a sufficient amount of data and it's impractical in a school because they'll have a timetable to follow. So a little bit of application to a school and, and it being um, small scale. But again, it's quite undeveloped. But you can see this is clearly a lot more developed compared to the B1 and the B2. Moving further up, we've got band four. So at this point, we've got a strength and weakness of the method. You've got your application to the method in the context of the question, for example, labeling. It's undeveloped, but it's nearly there. Okay, so we're starting to see the characteristics of the context in the question, okay? So we've got two examples here. So a further disadvantage of field experiments is that the participants are under 18, they're considered a vulnerable group, the researcher will need a DBS check, furthermore they'll need permission off the gatekeeper to investigate labelling of pupils, however the head teacher may not agree as they would not like um, parents to know that the teachers are labelling students based on judgment. Now you're probably thinking why is that like B4 not B5? There's very little um, evidence in this one which is showing the link to a field experiment in particular. There's no real issue about the field experiment. Perfect about education, a little bit about labelling and a little bit about the research method um, in general but not specific enough to field experiments. Teachers may not want to take part in a field experiment because they feel it's being like um, observed by Ofsted, being judged on how they treat pupils. Going off a sample of teachers who are fine with taking part um, as no teacher would want to admit that they judge their pupils negatively as seen in the item may not be aware that they're doing so. So they might be asked to take part in the research that relies on teacher labelling would be hard. And again, there's no real application to the field experiment, a lot of application to the context in the question, but not quite specific enough. So lastly, this is your specific strength and weaknesses of the method, field experiment, so very specific, plus the context in the question, the effect of labelling when studying education. Okay, so at this band, you are going to show a knock-on effect as well. Okay, so we've got a two big chunky paragraphs that got B5. So for example, if a student is aware that they're being labelled negatively, then it's unlikely they will feel willing to take part in a field experiment. They're too embarrassed about their label. If their label caused them to misbehave or truant, they might be embarrassed to take part. The same for teachers, if they make judgments and stereotypical assumptions on working class or based on ethnicity, they're gonna be less willing to participate in a field experiment because it's a sensitive subject. You may get many who are willing to take part in a field experiment because they are labeled positively and no data regarding those who have a negative label. So you cannot detect the real impact or the effect, which is the link to the method because field experiment study cause and effect of labeling on a student's achievement. That paragraph has gone right the way up to band five. Same with this one. Ethical consideration of research is that participants are not subjected to any psychological harm during or prior to the field experiment as a result of direct labeling and discriminate discriminatory behaviour. Um, as a researcher setting up the field experiment, they have a moral obligation to protect and avoid any long-term effects. For example, in the case of Rosenthal or Jacobson, those that were identified as spurters benefited from the outcome of the research as they improved on tests a year later, but the pupils that were not were put at an educational disadvantage, which might have had a long-term effect. So here we've got a clear um, issue about a field experiment and a lot of successful students applied Rosenthal of Jacobson study and that allowed them to go up to band five. 
um, and then they talked about the effects of labeling and how it might be a disadvantage okay so what we've done here to summarize I've showed you the difference from a B1 all the way up to a B5 um, on and how we mark these methods in context. So every paragraph and every statement is looked at separately. They're awarded B1, B2, B3, B4, B5 to the content and then your answer is judged as a whole based on how many of B3s, B4s, B5s that, that you have got in it and that you move up the mark scheme. Okay. Um, if you're thinking about how to structure it, I got this from, um, I got it off Google Images and it was from Southworld Sociology, so I'm just crediting that there. Um, but it gives you a little bit of um, a way to structure your answer if you're struggling in how to um, structure it there. What I do have to mention is that you are um, making sure that you're applying to the context in the question. So start off with your your basic strengths and weaknesses and develop them paragraphs all the way to the content um, that is asked for in the question. Okay, um, so thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, any comments, stick them in the comment section below. Um, I will be looking at specific questions um, and um, specific answers um, also. So just let me know if you want any specific questions done. Okay, thanks for listening.